Hey everyone! If you need to enumerate a number of options, you can use enumeration types in C++, or enums for short. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. So as always, I start by showing the special symbols that I use on my slides, but with this out of the way, let's talk about the enumeration types, or classes. The way they look is uh, you type enum class, then the name uh, of your enum class, and then you basically specify the options that you want to have. So, for example, here we have the food options, and they are the pizza, the pasta, and the sushi, and we can have the choices uh, enum, which is just yay or nay. And we usually name them just like we name constants, because they are unchangeable and constant. You also see that in the first line uh, you have this uh, uh, colon and the base type, so you can provide a different base type. If you don't provide it, it's going to be just an integer. All of the options provided in the enum are um, assigned consequent numbers, and they're usually used inside of a switch statement to pick a path within that switch statement. You can use the values uh, from the enum by specifying the name of the enum type, then the four dots, and then the name of the option that you want. So, for example, the food option, four dots, and then K pizza will pick the pizza. And as I said before, you usually name the types uh, in camel case, and you name the options uh, as if they're constants. So, as camel case with the prefix of a lowercase k. Now let's look at an example, because it's much easier to explain these things on example. So we have uh, some includes, we have our enum class output channel, and uh, we have two options, the std out and std error, and we have uh, the function print. So our function basically takes the output channel variable and the string uh, message that we want to print, and then we have a switch statement which basically covers the two cases, the k std out and k std err uh, cases, and what it does, it just prints the message either to std out or to std err, that's it. And then we call this function from the main uh, by basically providing the different, uh, the different values from our enum. Now, with that example out of the way, I want to talk about one more thing about enums. So, by default, the values start from zero. So, the values of the options start from zero. But if you want, you can always specify the value for each option in your enum. So, for example, if I want it to be set to 10, I can do that. And I can, of course, use all the, the hexademical or the binary or whatever else numbers that I want to use, as long as they are of the type that I provide uh, as the base type of my enum. I'd say that um, in my career, most of the times, like 99% of the times, I use the enums with their default values. And one final thing that I want to touch upon here is a kind of a cautionary tale. So, in the olden days, you would use the, the enums. So, not the enum class, but just the enum. And it looks something like this. It's very similar, you just don't have the class keyword there. So, it's just enum, my enum, and then the values in your enum. But please don't do this in C++ 11 and above. The reason why I don't suggest doing this is uh, very simple. So, in the enum classes, you remember that to call a value, you actually had to provide the name of your enum, then the four dots, and then the name of your value. It's not the same for this alt type enum, which means that the values are not scoped. So you can just use these values as if they're just global constants in your code. And if you remember me telling this in some previous lecture before, that uh, global variables are actually very bad, because you never know who defines them where. And that's exactly the problem here. So here there is a small example on the slide where I use both the old enum and the new enum, um, and you can see that I have to scope the new enum usage, but I don't scope the old enum usage. So just to outline this issue better, let's say we have the two enums, the enum decision, which is either right or wrong, and the uh, enum side, which is either right or left. If we want to define both of them within one CPP file, what will happen? Now, feel free to comment below this video what you think will happen and why. But also, just copy it over to a small CPP file and give it a try. At this point, you know how to compile your files, so that should take you, I don't know, maybe two minutes, max? And at this, you basically know everything there is to know about enums. So, enjoy this new tool in your toolbox. Thanks for your attention, and see you next time. Bye.